is Josh's first talk in Canada. So let's tell this guy absolutely how freaking amazing Canada is. Super pumped to be here. Uh, big shout out to all the panelists, uh, speakers. I got to spend some time with them last night at dinner and drinking with them. Uh, the people that I met were absolute hustlers. They would kill it in any business, in any industry. And uh, so that was cool, always talking, talking with other top producers. So congrats to you folks who are up here. Brian Hogman, my boy, my boy. Mission 35 Mortgage, thank you for bringing me out. By the way, he left something out of that story, just so you know. He got me on the phone and he said, I'll be right there. Hopped on a flight to Beverly Hills, showed up at my office, and closed me. Okay, he left that out. So that guy's a closer. So big shout out to Brian. Thank you. All right. Let's get started. So we're going to have a blast today. I'm going to talk about my story. I'm going to talk about my tips for success. Uh, and then I'm going to open up for Q&A. And, you know, Brian had said, he said, is there anything we can't ask you? I said, Brian, I've been on TV for 13 years. I got married on TV. I had my baby on TV. I said, ask me anything. There's no privacy left. So, uh, so feel free to ask whatever you want afterwards. And, you know, for me, I'm actually from Boston, which I know is not too far from here. And I moved out to L.A. about 20 years ago. And... Uh, I didn't have any money. I was broke. My brother and I, we didn't have two dimes to rub together. And in fact, we lived in a fraternity house. And the funny thing was, we weren't even part of that fraternity. <laughs> yeah, that's how poor we were. But we gave a friend 50 bucks a month. We slept on the couch. And every morning I woke up, I put on my rollerblades because I didn't have a car. And I rollerbladed to my job in the mailroom making $6.50 an hour. And, uh, you know, when I was in that mailroom for that year, uh, I was always obsessed with having mentors in my life and surrounding myself with successful people. You know, I'm one of those guys who goes to the airports and buy uh, every how to be successful book. And everybody who I was delivering mail to in the mailroom, uh, all the executives that were doing very well in life, uh, I was always interested on how they got to where they were. And so every time I got a paycheck, I would take one of those successful executives out to lunch with my, the money I made. And I would pick their brain, and it was funny because every conversation that I had with these people, they all were making extra money on the side in real estate. And so it piqued my interest. I said, how can you be so good at something that you're a pro at and then also make money on the side, either investing in real estate uh, uh, or being a real estate agent or something like that? So, I remember I rollerbladed home one day and I, I, I knocked on my brother's door and you know, my brother's typical older brother. I said, Matt, I got a great idea. Let's go buy a house and get into real estate. And he said, great idea, genius. We're broke, so how do you want to do that? I said, okay, all right, well, let's figure this out. If I save every dollar I make this year and just kind of squeeze by and you save every dollar you make, that, that we'll have $5,000 each at the end of the year. If we put it together, we'll have 10000 So we spent that year studying uh, the banking system and understanding mortgages, which Brian can tell you all about. And we found out there was a program called 100% Financing. So we took that ten grand, and I remember at the end of the year, we were pumped. We walked into the bank, we used that ten grand, and we bought a $400,000 condo. We moved into the condo. Uh, I'm still in the mailroom, and every time we got a paycheck, we would do something else different to the condo while living in it. Uh, one paycheck, we'd go to Home Depot, uh, get a bucket of paint, put on our old football jerseys, and we painted the place. Uh, next paycheck, we would switch out one light fixture for another. Next paycheck, we would literally just knock down a wall with a couple hammers. And after about 90 days, we were sitting back on our pleather couch, and yeah, we couldn't afford leather. We weren't there yet. So we sat back on our pleather couch and we're looking around and we're like, man, this place looks awesome. Let's put it back on the market. And that's what we did. And we took that $400,000 condo and we put it back on the market 90 days later for $600,000. About four weeks went by 
The market was going up every single day and we sold the place for 600 grand. Now, you gotta realize, I didn't have money before. All of a sudden, now I got 200 grand. If you ask my brother and I, we were millionaires. <laughs> I'm telling you, we were walking around, we felt we were the biggest developers to hit the Los Angeles scene. <laughs> I mean, our confidence was through the roof. You know, we took that 200 grand. Uh, I, immediately, I remember, I rollerbladed to a Jeep dealership because that was my dream car at the time, and I bought a Jeep. And then I drove to the mailroom, and I was like, I quit. <laughs> and I quit. And then, you know, my brother did the same thing. And, you know, we didn't pay any taxes because we, we never had money before, so we didn't really know about taxes either. And, uh, you know, we learned later on in life, you have to pay taxes. Um, the remainder of the money we put aside and we did it again. But this time we went a little bigger. We said, okay, well, let, let's buy a $700,000 house, which we did, and we took the garage, so it wasn't as co cosmetic, it was a little more construction. We took the garage and we built a, a, a guest house. And we, uh, so we were into it for about 740. We ended up putting it back on the market five months later, sold it for about 940. Now we're two for two. We're multi-millionaires. <laughs> Again, confidence level through the roof. We have no idea what we're doing. And I look at my brother, I said, well, now that we're full-time flippers, uh, it's, all about, it's all about the bottom line, right? It's all about uh, every time we sell a house, we gotta pay a realtor. Every time we buy a house, we gotta pay a mortgage broker. Why don't I go out, I'll get my real estate license. And uh, so I was nominated to go get the real estate license first. And you know, how many people in this room uh, failed their real estate exam? Is it as hard in Canada as it is in the US? You're like, no, it's not hard in the US or Canada. <laughs> I failed. I failed it. I was never a good test taker, uh, not a big deal. I went in for the second time and I failed it again. <laughs> oh, for two. At this point, I, uh, I took now two crash courses, uh, studied and everything, and on the third time was finally a charm. And I got my real estate exam, uh, my license, and uh, I had a decision to make. Was I gonna be a mortgage broker or was I gonna be a realtor? How many, how many mortgage brokers are in the room today? All right, good amount. And how many real estate agents? <laughs> all right, all right, all right, I see what's going on here. Um, okay, so I had a, a, a choice and it was funny, you know, I was a young guy, I was starting to make some really good money, you know, the important things in life were only fancy, shiny things and uh, the mortgage broker I knew drove a Porsche and the real estate agent I knew didn't drive a Porsche. So I said, I'm gonna be a mortgage broker. That was literally how I made the decision, super scary. And uh, so I, I joined a mortgage company and I remember because I walked in and uh, I, I met with every mortgage company in Beverly Hills because I said, if I'm gonna sell mortgages, I wanna sell the biggest mortgages. And I walked up and down the streets in Beverly Hills and there was a mortgage company like every 25 feet. And I decided to join the one that uh, promised me the best leads, the Glen Gary leads. Because <laughs> you guys know, right? It, the, the better the lead, the more money you make. It's very simple. And I remember I went home that night and uh, I don't know if you guys have these stores out here, but you get like three suits, three ties, three uh, belts, and three socks for $333. You guys have that? We do. They're polyester suits. Um, and that's what I got. I went out and I got those three suits. And I remember trying on the first one and practicing my pitch the night before. And then I show up to the mortgage company the next day. I'm super pumped. And I walk into the boss's office. He tells me to take a seat at the cubicle. And I sit down next to 75 other cubicles with other people. And... Uh, he walks over to my desk and I say, hey, can I get those leads you promised me? And he says, sure, Josh. And he drops a phone book on my desk. <laughs> now, how many people call out of a phone book before? <coughs> no one in this room? Oh, you, oh, you do. Yeah, you're like, horrible, right? Horrible. horrible. So that was how I got started in the mortgage business. I started calling uh, from 8 a.m. to legally at the time with the latest we were allowed to call was uh, 8 p.m. So it was 8 to 8, pounding the phone book every single day. And uh, eventually, I started to get good. You know, you learn a couple things calling out of a phone book. You learn how to embrace rejection uh, because everybody hangs up on you. That also helped me as a single guy in the Los Angeles bar and club scene. <laughs> So you embrace rejection. You also learn how to have tough skin. And uh, both things that still today help me get to where I am. Eventually I closed my first deal. 
Month went by, closed another deal, two deals, four deals a month, six deals a month, 10, 12, 20. About six months into it, I'm the top guy in this Beverly Hills mortgage company. Now, as, as you know from my story, Sometimes I get a little ahead of myself. You know, flipped our first house. We thought we were major developers. Uh, I've now been in the mortgage business for about seven months. Decided I know everything about mortgages. It's time to open my own company. <laughs> so that's what I did. I went and I got a 10,000 square foot office space uh, in LA. And you know, my, my, from the time I joined the mortgage company to that seven months later, I got a fancy car because I started making good money. And my friends noticed, so I, hired all my friends in the mortgage business. So we all worked together, and uh, that was a time when you literally could just give away mortgages. How many mortgage brokers remember that time? Pretty much the greatest time ever, right? Are you with me? It was crazy, you could just pass them out. And uh, started that mortgage company, and let me tell you, we had, God, we had three amazing, amazing years. And it was, it was like we were making so much money at the time that if we made 10 grand on a deal, we went out that night and we spent 11 celebrating. <laughs> now, I don't know how that math made sense to me at the time, but it definitely doesn't make sense now. And I remember the day like it was yesterday. It was mid-2007. Got this big office and one of my, I'm 26, by the way. And uh, bank rep walks into my office and goes, Josh, we're closing our doors. I'm like, it's two in the afternoon. What do you mean you're closing your doors? Like, Josh, have you been paying attention to what's going on you know, outside? I'm like, what? He's like, dude, we're, we're going out of business. I was so caught up in what we were doing, I wasn't paying attention to anything else in the world. And I said, you know, not a big deal. One bankrupt gone, I got 16 others, we're good. Two months later, the next bankrupt came in, closed their doors. And it was like a domino effect. And when I tell you it was like overnight, the faucet stopped. That was it. And like that, I was putting chains on the 10,000 square foot office space that I had personally guaranteed for five years. And we were only in it for about a year. I was a millionaire by 26. I was flat broke by 26 and a half. You, because I, I remember waking up in a cold sweat one morning and uh, I said, oh my God, it cost me $43,000 to get out of bed every month just on the, the house payments, on the car payments. I, I left this out, by the way. Three weeks before the economy collapsed, I bought my dream house. I, I was in the mortgage business. It was going to last forever. So my brother and I bought a castle in the Hollywood Hills. You know who buys castles? Kings. <laughs> you know how many kings live in the Hollywood Hills? None. None. But my brother and I thought the house was perfect for us, this castle. It had the turrets and everything. Uh, because it had two master bedrooms, and that way we wouldn't fight over who got the bigger bedroom. That was our decision on how to spend that three and a half million dollars. So. We're in this castle, uh, our world falls apart. And very quickly, literally a month after moving in there, we are screwed. Uh, I remember watching all the cars getting taken away. Every month that uh, the mortgage was due was less and less money that I had. And because when you're making a lot of money, it's okay to pay bills, but when it stops, very quickly it, it depletes. Next year, I actually didn't talk about the next year for a long time. It was, it was a very difficult time in my life. Uh, I got depressed. Uh, I don't know if any of you have been there before. Um, I was in like a downward spiral and I couldn't crawl out of it. Um, I lied to all my friends because I was super embarrassed that I had failed. Uh, I didn't let anybody know that I was broke, so I just stopped talking to everybody, ruined every relationship I had. Couldn't get out of bed. My favorite thing to do is work out in the morning. I didn't get out of bed for about a year. And uh, uh, eventually, you know, I, I was lucky enough to have my brother and we would try to motivate each other. And we even tried to do things, you know, it was, it was basically our mind was, how do we get rich quick again? Which is not the mindset that you want to have in life. And so we tried to do everything. I, I remember we were driving and we drove past a Christmas tree lot. And I look at my brother, I'm like, man, that guy must make a lot of money. And... <laughs> 
people say Christmas trees. Everybody buys Christmas trees, and you can charge more because where else are you going to get a Christmas tree? And uh, so I look at my brother. I'm like, what's the next holiday? And he goes, oh, Valentine's Day is in February. And I go, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into a bank, and we're going to borrow 20 grand, and we're going to go buy $20,000 worth of roses, and we're going to charge 80000 when we resell them. We're going to mark them up four times. We ended up talking into one of our friends into giving us a 20 grand. We opened up a pop-up shop for 48 hours on Valentine's Day and bought roses. And the funny thing is, when you don't do market research, you fail. <laughs> we did not know that people are super loyal, loyal to their florists, by the way. You would never know that. Well, they are. And uh, all of our friends had the best... Uh, Valentine's Day ever when it was about 6 o'clock and we called all them to come pick up $20,000 worth of roses. Well, we couldn't win at this point. Eventually, I remember we were out to dinner with a mentor of ours one time and he said, guys, enough with this trying to get rich quick thing and thinking how you're going to get back. Let's, let's talk about what you, what you love to do. Let's talk about what gets you excited. And uh, we're like, well, you know, we don't really have money or anything to do, so we like to drive around on Sundays and look at houses. And that's our favorite thing to do. So, you know, we go to all the open houses on Sunday, because in LA, you know, there are open houses on Sundays. And we walk through them and we dream a little bit because we used to flip houses and uh, we used to finance houses. So it's fun for us. And he says, well, why don't you just become realtors? You flipped houses, you finance houses, now sell houses. You guys love talking to people, right? And we're like, well, yeah, of course. And that's what we decided to do. And we decided to become real estate agents. And it's funny because we walked out the same streets that those mortgage companies were on in Beverly Hills, but now none of them existed, like maybe one out of 20. But there were a couple real estate companies that were still around. One of them happened to be owned by Paris Hilton's father, a guy named Rick Hilton, right? He's a, a legend in real estate. And I remember we got a meeting with Rick. And Matt and I are sitting in this, you know, legend's big office, and he goes, folks, you sound like you're hungry, but we don't hire new agents. And I remember I'm just like kicking my, my brother under the table. I was like, no, no, we're not new agents. We, we, we've sold 25 houses. He goes, really? Oh, I, I never heard of you guys. Little did he know, all 25 were our own flips that we continued to do. And the last happened to be a castle <laughs> that we lost everything on. Well, we got our foot in the door, which a lot of times is the most important part of it. And we got our little office, and we started selling, and we were going to get back to where we were, and we were not going to stop. And let me tell you, we hit the ground running. We door knocked nonstop. We cold called nonstop because that's what we knew how to do. We were relentless. And for the first six months, we were the first people in the office. We were the last people leaving. You know how much we sold in that first six months? Zero. How many new realtors in here? Not easy when you start, right? But let me tell you, it only gets better because eventually we close that first deal. And what's cool about the first deal is you always remember everything about it. I can tell you it was $1.6 million. I can tell you the piece of land. I can tell you how long the contingencies were because I needed money like I needed air. And I knew everything about that deal still today. I love that deal. And eventually we closed it. And then we closed a second and a third. And, and the second year, we sold $12 million worth of real estate. Now, in LA, that's three houses, OK? <laughs> we sold three houses. But it sounds better when I say we closed $12 million worth of real estate. Next year, we had a good year. We sold $38 million. Fourth year, we sold $88 million. Fifth year, we sold about 157. million. And then there was this 24-month period where we ended up selling $500 million worth of residential real estate. And then there was this 12-month period that we sold $500 million. We started rocking and rolling. We're back to where we wanted to be. We're on all these lists of uh, you know, different uh, top realtor lists. And I get a call from a show called Million Dollar Listing. You guys heard of the show? Yes. Who's your favorite on that show? <laughs> what? He doesn't like Canada. <laughs> so I get a call and they go, Josh, uh, 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 we want to interview your brother and you. We are replacing somebody on the show. It had been on for two years before, two seasons. I hadn't seen it, but I heard about it because I was actually in the office 
with the guy that we had replaced. I don't know if you guys, whoever watched it from the beginning, there was a guy with funny hair, and that's who we replaced. And uh, I remember, I look at my brother, I was like, let's do this. And he's like, why don't you go do it? I was like, what? no, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll do the show together. He's like, eh, you go do it. Okay, and, and then I remembered that moment when I went to go visit him in school, and he said, hey, let's go dye our hair blonde. And he said, me, go first. So I did. And I turn around, and they take the towel off my head, and I have tennis ball yellow hair. <laughs> and I remember looking at my brother. I was like, Matt, isn't this cool? All right, you go, you go. And he goes, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> That's the guy who was telling me to go first. So uh, he decided he was going to be behind the scenes. And uh, at that moment, I, I, I remember uh, I called up my mom. I said, all right, uh, hey, mom, I, I got this TV show. They called me up. They uh, invited me to be on Million Dollar Listing. And, you know, she's in Boston and uh, immediately hangs up the phone, calls all of Boston. <laughs> Josh got a show. Josh got a show. So I drive to the production company. I walk in the door, and there's a room like this full of realtors. So I immediately text my mom, no show, no show, stop calling everybody. <laughs> it was too late. She already reached like 500 people. I went to, I went to the audition. I get a call back like uh, probably a month later. I kind of forgot about it. Uh, didn't think I got it. And this time I walked in, there was like half the room. And then another couple weeks, there was another audition in another half the room. And it got smaller and smaller. And eventually uh, they offered me the gig. And, uh, man, the rest is history. We just, we're currently filming season 12 right now. My producers literally texted me and said, get your butt back here. We have to film. And uh, that comes out. And the best part about the show is uh, I got to meet my wife on the show. So for those of you who haven't seen it, my wife was my enemy's assistant. <laughs> So I remember I was in my office. I'm like, how am I going to screw this guy over? <laughs> and it was like, ah, I'm going to screw his assistant. <laughs> now, I can say that because she's my wife. But uh, yeah, and, and since then, yeah, got, uh, actually got engaged on the show, got married on the show, had uh, our first daughter, Alexis, uh, on the show. She's about three years old. And uh, nine weeks ago, I had a son, Ace. And... Uh, it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. It's been obviously an amazing stage for your real estate business. And, and because of it, it plays in 70 countries around the world, 2 million viewers an episode, and we get inundated with questions. And uh, a lot of the questions is, you know, J Josh, wh what are your tips for success? And uh, yeah, I took a lot of time to come up with the tips and think about how I can help people and do different things. And uh, so I figured maybe we'll talk about them. You guys want to talk about them? Yeah. All right, let's do it. You guys having fun? All right, I'm having a blast in the hammer, the hammer city. All right, well, I'm about to drop the knowledge hammer on you guys right now. So, uh, um, all right, first, Josh Altman's tip for success is uh, it's called Ready, Fire, Aim. And for those of you who read my first book, I talk about it in the book. Uh, Ready, Fire, Aim is a motto that we go by in our office. And what it means is you have to be able to recognize an opportunity when it's in front of you. You have to be able to learn how to capitalize on any opportunity. And if you fail, if you miss, you have to re-aim and finish strong. So not ready, aim, fire, but ready, fire, aim. Let me give you an example. Um, I think it was about seven years ago. I'm at Equinox in the morning, the gym. It's six o'clock in the morning. I like to start my day at the gym. And I'm running on the treadmill. And uh, I look to the right of me. And I realize, oh my god, that's Tyler Perry. You guys know who Tyler Perry is? Yeah, yeah he's like a billionaire, actor, director. The guy is loaded. So anybody who's a billionaire, I decided a long time ago I want to be friends with them. And uh, so that's what I was going to do. So I, I remember running next to him. And I go, ready, fire, aim. So I just tap him on his shoulder, right? And uh, I go, take my headphones off. Hey, Tyler, I'm Josh Altman. I know where you live. <laughs> oh. oh my God, that was the worst client pickup line in the world. What did I just do? I put my headphones back on. I'm pressing faster on the treadmill. He's still right next to me. Super awkward, right? Well, I, I go, oh man, well, that was a mess up. 
ready, fire, aim. Here we go again. And about a minute went by, and I go, I tap him on the shoulder again. You know, by the way, we're all short on the show in real life. <laughs> we're all hovering between like five, nine, and five, nine and a half. So, you know, Tyler is up here. I'm tapping his shoulder. And uh, I was like, hey. He goes, yeah. I go, that was weird. What I meant to say was, I, 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 of course I know where you live because I'm a realtor and I sell high-end real estate and I just wanted to tell you, you got a great house and if you ever want to sell, I'm your guy and hey, w w would you ever sell? And he looks down at me and goes, uh, you know, I actually haven't been there in a while. You know, for the right price, I guess I would. Nice to meet you and puts on his headphones. <laughs> he didn't say no. He didn't say no. Have you guys ever seen somebody fall off of a treadmill before? Because <laughs> that's about what happened. I caught myself. I'm pumped. Five minutes go by. Tyler gets off the treadmill. It's fate because I happen to get off the treadmill the same exact time. <laughs> so he walked. Oh, hey. Good to see you again. Hey, uh, so listen. You said you would sell for the right price. What, what, what's that price? And he goes, oh, you know, I, I don't know. My, my assistant lives there. Uh, 12 million-ish, I go, okay, all right. And so I, I'm very good always about having the ball in my court. You learn in sales you know, very early on, you don't have the ball in your court, you're not in the game. So I'm very good at getting people's phone numbers and, and, and getting contact info. They teach you very early on because I, I ended up getting his cell phone number. That way I can call him if I ever need to. And I remember driving out of the gym like four and a half minutes later and I called my brother. I was like, you won't believe this. I just spoke to Tyler Perry. He would sell his house in the Hollywood Hills for $12 million. Isn't that cool? I got to meet him. My brother's like, dude, how much? I go, $12 million. He goes, we have John who's looking for $12 million in the Hollywood Hills. Did you tell him? I'm like, oh my God, Matt, I'll call you back. Dude, 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 dude. Tyler, Josh Alton from the gym four and a half minutes ago. How are you? <laughs> he goes, oh, man, I shouldn't have given you my number. I was like, no, 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 don't hang up. Don't hang up. Don't hang up. Listen, listen, listen. I got the perfect buyer. I'm sorry. I was out of breath before. I didn't think about it. You got to let me show you a house. He goes, I, I appreciate your hustle. I, I don't think I want to sell. I go, Look, no, no, no. One time. Let me show it. Please let me show it. He goes, you know what? I'll let you show it once. My assistant's up there. He likes it. Tell him to make an offer. If not, you know, best of luck to you, but I, I'm not even sure I want to sell anymore. I call up John. Hang up the phone. John, where are you and what are you doing right now? And remember, this is 7, 12 in the morning, okay? Just left the gym. He's like, oh, man, I just woke up. I'm about to head to Malibu to go surf. And John's a, a big hedge fund guy. A lot of money. Young guy. And uh, uh, I go, no, no, no. You can't go surf. I'm going to pick you up right now. I want to show you something. He's like, no, I heard it's good waves. And then as salespeople, you guys know, sometimes you just start talking. So I said, no, no, you can't go to Malibu because there was a rock slide on Pacific Coast Highway. No one's getting in Malibu. No one's getting out. It's, it's a nightmare. And he goes, what do you mean? And I'm like, from the rain, the rain last night. It was crazy. And now I'm just on a roll, you know? I'm on a roll. He goes, what rain? I was at the club till 2 in the morning. I go, it started at 2.10 in the morning. It was crazy. By the time we were done talking, I was already in front of his house. And uh, I was like, just come outside. i got to show you something. I drove him to the house. We're walking through the house. It's a 10,000 square foot house. At this time, at $12 million, it was the most expensive house that I had ever shown. And uh, walking through, and, you know, my fingers are crossed. I'm praying to the real estate gods. I'm trying to play it cool, but, you know, I, I'm not that cool. That I, I, We need to close this deal. And I'm trying to, like, see if he's smiling, but I'm walking behind him. So I'm just kind of guessing what's going on. We walk outside the house. He looks at me and he goes, that house is awesome. I want it. Write an offer. Now, this is the, the biggest offer at the time that I'm ever going to be writing. He looks at me, goes, write the offer. I literally forgot I was a realtor. <laughs> I thought I was just his cheerleading friend. And I go, yeah, let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> and he goes, what? I go, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to go to the office right now, write the offer, and I'm going to docu-sign it to you. Uh, how much? He goes, $10 million all cash. I go, okay, cool. Go to the office, write it up, send it through to him, tell me in all cash. He signs it. I call up Tyler. I go, Tyler, I got an offer for you, $10 million all cash. What do you want to do? He goes, wow. He goes, that was quick. I, I appreciate it. 
I'm at 12, I'll tell you what, let's go back at 11.75 million. And he goes, okay, cool. So I send it over to him, I call my guy, he goes, uh, 10 and a half million, what do you think? So I call Tyler, 10 and a half million, comes down to 11 and a half million. Then I go to my guy and he says about 10.75 million. Then I go back to Tyler Perry, he's at about 11.4. My guy comes up to $11.25 million. This is from 7 a.m. in the morning to about four o'clock in the afternoon. As Tyler is leaving town, he docu-signs the acceptance and I ended up double ending the biggest deal of my career in one day. Thank you. That is what Ready, Fire, Aim is all about, okay? That is it. You saw an opportunity, you capitalize on that opportunity. If you mess up, if you got the worst client pickup line in the history of client pickup lines, it doesn't matter. You gotta bounce back and you gotta finish strong and you gotta learn from your mistakes. All right, number two, you guys want another one? All right, come on, let's get it up, come on. All right, uh, okay, this is a good story. I'll tell you this one. Choose to be lucky, choose to be lucky. Put yourselves in situations where you surround yourself with the type of clientele that you want to sell to. Choose to be lucky. I'll give you an example. You know, as a realtor, for all you realtors in this room, you know some days are slower than others. You know, I'll, the day before, sometimes I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Maybe I'll have seven showings. Maybe I won't. And I remember getting a call the night before from a concierge that said, hey, you got to go pick up this guy at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Russian guy, uh, he wants to see houses between 15 and 20 million. Okay, cool, sounds good. I go pick him up, and uh, uh, I remember he didn't speak really any English, and you know, awkwardly driving with your client to listings, don't really say anything, but first two houses, wasn't impressed. Third house was about, I think it was 17 and a half million dollars. He walked through it. Now this house was special. It was a three house compound. <coughs> So it was one of these crazy compounds and you know, you get this amazing piece of land up in Beverly Hills. He walks out, I think he's gonna say he likes it and he goes, no. And that was it. And I remember dropping him off back at the Beverly Hills Hotel and never actually spoke to him again and found out he bought a house through somebody else. It happens, right? It's just part of the business. After that showing, I had about two hours to kill till my next showing. Sometimes I like going into the office, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I like just being out there because, you know, more people you talk to, the more deals you get. So I went to my other office. It's called Starbucks. You have one here. <laughs> Should have invested in that. So, you, so I, I go to my Starbucks, my office, and uh, I set up shop. Now, this is not just any Starbucks. It's a Starbucks on the, uh, uh, you know, right next to Rodeo Drive. So every wealthy person in the morning who goes, uh, gets their coffee, goes to that Starbucks. Uh, there's like paparazzi outside sometimes. Tons of celebs go in there. So I go in there, which I always go there for that reason, and I sit down at a hot to high top table, you know, put a bunch of MLS sheets out there, open up the the, the mansion section of the Wall Street Journal, open up my computer to just put, I have a giant house on it. I basically have a sign on my forehead that says, I'm a realtor, open for business. <laughs> Shameless. And uh, I'm sitting there and I had just gotten this giant hot, uh, uh, hot uh, vanilla latte and I sat down and I was about to take a sip and in walks an NBA all-star. And you know, the, 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 the bell on the door jingled. And I go, oh, welcome to Starbucks. And I look over, it's like slow motion. And I'm like, oh my God. Now, you know, NBA players are pretty easy typically to spot. You know, seven feet tall, can't miss them. I, uh, he gets in line, I immediately go, oh boy. Take my coffee, walk over to the garbage, <laughs> throw it away, get right back in line. <laughs> Ready, fire, aim. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Tap him on his shoulder. He looks back at me, he goes, yep. Yeah. Huge fan. Huge fan of yours. Just wanted to say, my name's Josh Alvin. I'm, <laughs> I'm getting coffee, too. I drink coffee, too. And uh, we're going to, uh, yeah, if you ever need anything in real estate, uh, here's my card. I will hook you up. Wh whatever you want. I'll take care of you, your friends, whatever. And he goes, oh, I appreciate it, man. Thanks so much. And uh, you, you know what's funny is I saw this house. The other day, I was looking at houses, and uh, I go, what, 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 huh? Yeah, I was looking at houses the other day. What do you mean? 
And he's like, well, I'm, I'm, it's funny. I've been looking for a while for something, you know, kind of specific. It's like a multi-house compound. <laughs> You know, one house where my parents can live, another house where my entourage can live, and then I can get my own space. That's what I'm looking for. Now, you got to realize, this house hit the market like the day before. My showing earlier that day was the first access to that house. It's been 42 minutes. The realtor is probably still at the house locking up because it's such a big house. I look at him and I go, you need to get in my car. <laughs> He goes, I'm sorry. I said, I need you to get in my car right now. <laughs> and uh, he's looking at me like a, a weird, deranged fan. And uh, I, he, he's like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm cool, but, you know, what, what's up? I was like, take him my wallet. I will give you $1,000 if you get in my car right now. <laughs> now, he thinks I'm going to either kidnap him or I don't know what he thinks. But I finally <laughs> talk him into following me. Uh, in his car, and I say, you got to see this thing. Trust me, no one's seen it yet. I drive him up to the house. This is 10 minutes later. He buys it on the spot for $17 million. Now, a lot of you are like, that lucky son of a bee. <laughs> right? That's your natural reaction to that story. It's not luck. I was in Starbucks for a reason, and that was the reason. I mean, it panned out. It's not going to happen every single time, but choose to be lucky. Put yourself in situations where you are surrounding yourself with the clients that you want to sell to. It's that simple. If you're not out there, then you're not available. Choose to be lucky. We have, uh, we have time for one more. You guys want one more? All right, cool. I'm having a blast. Here you go. Free books. Who wants one? Yeah, you want? Here you go. There you go. All right. So, okay, you can take one too. Okay. It's all yours. Sorry. Um, so, uh, okay, final story. Um, let's do, uh, I, you know, as realtors, you become really good storytellers, right? Each deal is another story. So uh, how about, okay. A while ago, I got a call from a young lady, and she, I pick up the phone. She says, hey, my name's so-and-so. Uh, I'm looking for a lease in West Hollywood, 4500 a month. Can you help me? Now, how many realtors in this room do leases? Right? How do we feel about leases? <laughs> I was like, well, if I sell a house, it's going to take me the same time potentially as leasing a house. One, I make a good amount of money. The other one, I make nada. So, you know, usually you're like, uh, lease, uh. That day, I said, you know what? Sure. I'll tell you what. You sound very nice. I'm going to pick you up. We're going to go see four houses in West Hollywood tomorrow. Choose one. And, uh, yeah, we'll call it a day. It'll be perfect. <laughs> it's always the best when you just start telling your clients what to do. Um, so we, you know, pick her up, show her four houses. She doesn't like any. Okay, not, not, not a big deal. I'll pick you up on Thursday. I'll show you four more. Just choose one. It's fine. All you need is one. <laughs> pick her up, show her four more. She doesn't like any. A week goes by. She doesn't like any. A month goes by. She doesn't like any. Now, if you're like me, when I start something, I have to finish it, or I can't sleep at night. It's just something with the thing that my guidance counselor told me, ADD, ADHD, <laughs> obsessive compulsive, whatever it was, all those reasons why I had to take tests sometimes. So uh, eventually, after two months, and this is crazy because I'm literally adding up the commission, which you should never do before you close a deal. I'm adding up the commission in my head. I'm like, my life has come full circle. I'm making less money on this deal than I was in the mailroom. <laughs> How is that possible? But I had to finish. We find the house. She loves it. That night, she calls up her father. And now I know what this feels like now that I have a daughter. And, you know, if my daughter ever called me and said, Dad, I'm so excited. I just found an amazing house in L.A. I'm so happy here. Of course, I'm going to be super excited. Well, so was her dad. Her dad was sitting across from what she told me, the table of the CEO of the Fortune 500 company that he works for. He hangs up the phone, he says, who's that? My daughter, she's very happy, she just found a house in LA. He goes, oh, I have a penthouse in LA, haven't been there in a while, is the realtor any good? Now the rest, this part I kind of made up in my mind. <laughs> I, you know, 
No one saw it, so I can say this. So I, I, this is what I picture him saying. Yes, he doesn't care about money because he just did a lease for three months, uh, so yes, you should use him. Oh, great. Okay, I'm going to call him up right now. That's what I think happened. Who knows? I get a call from the CEO of the company. And he goes, hey, my name's so-and-so. I got a penthouse in Santa Monica, four and a half million dollars. Uh, love to meet you and uh, see if you can list it. We get the listing. And you know, just like you guys, still today, every Sunday, uh, I sit open houses to pick up clients. Uh, every Tuesday, I sit brokers open to meet other realtors in the community and try to put deals together. And so it was on a Sunday, I was sitting in this penthouse, and uh, somebody walked into the penthouse and said, this is cool, do you have anything bigger? Now, you know, as realtors, we always say yes. That's it, we figure it out, we just go with it. And uh, uh, so I look at him, I go, absolutely. I got something amazing. Uh, let me take this phone call. I'll, I'll be right back. You know, quickly, I'm on Zillow, bigger apartment, Santa Monica. <laughs> no, I you just got to figure something out. I got to get his contact info. I said, you know what? Th this is going to be a long conference call I'm on. What's your number? I'm going to call you later. And of course, at that point, then I left the open house. I called all the realtors in Santa Monica that specialized in condos, everything on market, off market, what's going to hit the market. And I found one that was off market. I ended up getting in touch with the buyer. I show him the place. It was an 8,000 square foot penthouse with an 8,000 square foot rooftop deck in Santa Monica. I sold them the place for like $12 million, which at the time was the most expensive condo sale ever in Santa Monica. A couple months later, I ended up selling the $4.5 million penthouse of the CEO of the Fortune 500 company. Since then, that little nothing lease that I made like 800 bucks on. We have followed the introduction of her to her father, to her CEO, to the guy who walked in the open house, his friends, cousin, sister, brother. We have sold $35 million worth of residential real estate because of that nothing condo. In, re in real estate, it's all about relationships, treating everyone with respect. You guys are an awesome real estate community, just the way that you're all embracing each other today. Listen, one day you're going to be mad at somebody, but remember, next time you want to show that person house, you got to get access. So don't burn any bridges. Treat everybody with respect, and you guys will be million, million dollar listings. And uh, I'm going to open it up for Q&A now. You guys want to do some Q&A? We good? All right, why don't you come up? Yeah, cool. Hi, Tobias from Remax Escarpment. How are you? Good. How are you? Mm. Good. You said you like to read all the books in the airport. Yes. What would you say your one or two favorite books are on business Good question. Or growth? It's Your Move by Josh Altman. <laughs> and the Altman clothes. Um, yeah, uh, you know what? <sighs> I actually, I don't have a favorite book. I kind of just go through all of them. I think everybody's kind of got their own styles and selling. Um, I think there's a lot of good books out there. I think there's a lot of good training and coaching uh, programs out there. Um, actually, if you guys want to leave your card on the way out, I will send you a bunch of my coaching stuff if you want. Uh, and see if you like it. But there's always, I love hearing other people's sales uh, pitches and everything. Like the dinner last night was amazing because I got to sit next to other closers. And, uh, you know, there's, there were a couple people who were selling four or five hundred million dollars. And your houses are not as expensive as our houses. So to do that with million dollar houses is way beyond. So, uh, yeah, go out there, always take in as much as possible. Hey, Josh, Rob Simic, Keller Williams Edge. Uh, what percentage of your real estate business would you say you're running at profit-wise? Actual, profit? actual sales, not your other revenue streams. Profit in sales? Well, I mean, last year we sold, uh, I think it was $462 million in sales. I'll give you kind of the, the layout of my team, just so you know, people say, is it just you and your brother? So it started as my brother and I till we hit about 100 million in sales. Uh, then we started bringing on people. And I will tell you to this day, for those of you who have teams or are part of teams, it's extremely difficult uh, to not only keep a team together, but fi find the right 
kind of yin and yang the balance of a team. And that was always what was great about my brother and I is my brother, we like to say, is the, uh, uh, he's the therapist. He walks people through the house deal from A to Z. He goes out to dinner with them all the time. He becomes best friends. They, uh, you know, have play dates at their house. Me, I'm a straight up numbers guy. This is a good deal because of this, this, and this. This is the comps. This is what you have to buy it for. We're going to flip it for this, and that's it. And then I back out once the deal is in escrow. So it's a good kind of mix. My team right now is about, uh, I have 20 people. And uh, of the 25 are uh, my employees, which is, you know, assistants, marketing uh, directors. We have our own in-house PR, which, you know, is at this point in this, you know, in this industry, you have to put yourself out there as much as possible. I have a full-time camera guy and editor that works in our office nonstop, putting at, constantly putting out content or YouTube channels, uh, uh, podcasts, uh, you know, all social media. If I told you I just closed a $16 million deal the other day because I DM'd the billionaire owner out of the blue and heard back six weeks later from her assistant who said she got a DM, she's not really on Instagram, ended up selling that house. So it's crazy how you get deals now. Uh, the other 15 are my agents. Uh, I actually have one of my killer agents here today. Uh, Steven, where you at, buddy? Right oh, there you go. So Steven Sweeney, <laughs> let me... Stand up, stand up, because this is a hell of a story. I got to tell you this. Steven started with me what? A year ago. A year ago. Uh, Steven just closed the biggest deal of his career for $21 million. <laughs> a year into the business. And uh, what was interesting about it was they weren't even looking in the area where they bought. But he, uh, we ended up getting a listing. He pitched the listing. Uh, and the, the stuff that went into the deal, I won't really get into. But he was able to get access to the house before they owned it so they could sleep there to see if they liked it. How many of you ever done that before? <laughs> now, that can go one way or another. They're going to wake up in the morning buying it or never talking to you again. So, uh, you know, luckily they bought it. But congratulations to Steven. Killing it. <laughs> we got a question over here. How's it going? Joe Rayer from the Bike Justin Joe Realty Group. Nice How's to going, meet buddy? you. Uh, question. As you do more volume, you get more successful. Have you ever had an, uh, a case where you felt the client had the best experience to, only to find out they had the worst experience? How would you deal with that? You know what? Uh... <laughs> You're going to get to a point in your career where a couple things. One, no deal makes or breaks you. You do the best you can. You treat your client's money like it's your own money. And that's, you know, that's our motto. motto. That's what we live by. We do the best that we can. You're going to make money in real estate. You're going to lose money in real estate. I've been on both ends of that seesaw, especially in a market where we're in right now. I mean, you guys are in a, 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 a market where there's a lot of inventory hitting. In L.A., it's definitely slowed down. In New York, it's slowed down more. So you just have to, you know, continue uh, having a game plan and you have to adjust a little bit and look at your approach because, you know, people say, are you worried about if the market goes down? I said, listen, I'm 50% sellers and 50% buyers. So if I have to adjust a little bit, I will. But always remember, in, in markets that are going down, they're more motivated sellers than ever before. So uh, you just have to adjust. You have to embrace it and you have to know how to change with it. Um, you're not going to please everybody. You're not. It's just, that's just the way it goes. But at the end of the day, if you're, uh, if you're very good at what you do and you treat them uh, uh, with respect, that's the best that you can do. Majority of our deals now, I would say about 80% of it uh, is referrals and incoming calls, um, which is great. But, you know, the other 20% of it, I, I literally could go th through my last 12 deals and I can tell you the random situations that occurred where I ended up getting the deal. Um, I shot a YouTube video walkthrough of somebody else's listing. The listing expired with that realtor. The owner liked the video, called me up, got the listing, sold the house. You got to put yourself out there constantly, and you got to let everybody know what you do for a living. Every single person knows somebody who wants to buy or sell a house. You know, I don't know about you, but like when you show up to an event and your friend says, hey, I, I want to introduce you to my buddy. And he goes, oh, hey, you're a realtor? I just bought a house. And you look at your friend and you're like, what the hell is wrong with you? Why didn't you tell him about me? You got to constantly be in front of your clients. I heard uh, uh, one of the guys on the panel before uh, talking about how important uh, holiday cards are. Just a little reminder somehow that, hey, we're still here if you ever want to buy or sell another property. Um, so you constantly have to be in front of them. The best gift, I'm going to give you a little tip, the best closing gift that I've ever done 
And we've gone through it all. Let me tell you, we you, know, you sell a big house, we give you a Rolex watch, we do this, we do that, custom suits, depending on the size of the commission, of course. But the single best gift that we've ever given anybody is that when they close on a property, we give them a gift certificate to have a dinner for 20 people at their new house that we just sold them. It expires within 90 days because after 90 days, they forget who the hell you are, right? So within 90 days, they're going to throw a dinner party at their new house, and you are the king and queen of that party because I guarantee you they're going to talk about you. They're going to toast you. They're going to say how thankful they are that you got them this house, and now you're meeting 18 or 19 of the other of their friends. And if anybody in that crowd wants to sell, you work that room, and you make sure that you walk out of there with a lot of referrals. That was the best gift that kept in giving, and it wasn't super expensive. All right, last question. Last one. All right. What do we got here? Frank Salvatore Remax Escarpment. On a scale Looking of one sharp. to ten, thank you. You always dress as sharp? I do. All right, I'm glad I'm not going <laughs> up against you. <laughs> on a scale of one to ten, how much do you really hate Josh Flagg? <laughs> or is that just for TV? <laughs> oh, man. One to ten, how much? That's a great question to end on. <laughs> All right, well, it's been good, everybody. I'll see you later. No. Uh, yeah, jo so here's the deal. Just like the story that I left you guys with, uh, treat everybody with the respect. Um, yeah, I don't like Josh Flagg. I'm not going to lie. Don't like him. Uh, I was trying to think of a way to kind of twist it a little bit. I don't like him. We don't get along. Um, but if Josh ever wants to show one of my listings or I want to show his, we're going to open the door with the biggest smile on our face that you've ever seen. And it's funny because in Beverly Hills, sellers who watch the show when they want to sell, you know, you would think, oh, well, they like one guy but not the other, or they like the lady and not the guy or whatever. Like, you can't like all of us. It's impossible. No one like, anybody like all of us? No way. You're wrong. You're lying. You're lying. It's not possible. We're just all way too different types of people. Um, but sellers get a kick out of, oh, let's sell our house and let's meet with all of them. <laughs> and so we go up against each other multiple times a month, way more than you would ever imagine. All five of us go up against each other. So people say, you know, is the drama real on the show? It's real because there's so many deals that were entangled together where he went up for that listing, but I got it. Or she didn't sell the house and I did or whatever. So there's so much drama where we can talk smack to each other that uh, the show actually works very well because of that. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, you, you learn to deal with people. <laughs> Anyways, I love you guys so much. Thank you for listening. I had a blast. Seriously. Give Josh a big round, Thank guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, brother. Thank I appreciate it, man. Absolutely awesome. Absolutely. Thank you.